Well, it is always a real treat to welcome one of the gentlemen of uh, sport fishing uh, television to the program. Wes David, of course, is the host and producer of the Fishing Wild West TV show that can be heard on a couple of uh, major networks like the World Fishing Network and the Sportsman Channel, among others. Wes, uh, first of all, thanks so much for taking time out of what I what I've come to learn has been a very busy schedule for you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Um, and uh, it's 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 a real pleasure to be part of your show. Um, yeah, it has been crazy busy, Michael. It's uh, and I'm very flattered. Uh, like I'm, I'm not complaining. It's good to be busy. Um, our our viewers and supporters have helped us, you know, grow and maintain that busyness. And it's uh, I'm very flattered and just want to say thanks. Well, let's let's kick this off by talking a little bit about uh, um, Alberta and angling opportunities in this province. I know you do spend some time in Alberta um, fishing, and I, I guess maybe at the the top level, give us your, you know, um, you may get comments. I get them all the time. People are are frustrated with with regulations. They don't think we do enough in this area or in that area. Get, what is, what is, what is the state of Alberta angling in in your mind, Wes? Um well, I'm, I'm fortunate to get the fish right from southern Alberta on the reservoirs <clears throat> right to northern Alberta. Um I'm also fortunate to have worked with um you know conservation clubs and associations. Um and, and I think what people are asking those questions, what they have to understand is our neighboring province, for example, Saskatchewan, lays claim to 112,000 lakes um, with a much less people population. Alberta has 800 lakes with a larger people uh, population. In my personal opinion, I think Alberta has done a, a great job just allowing us to have somewhere to go fishing. Um, one, give thanks back to the angler. And they're asking questions because they want to know, because they want to, you know, they everybody wants to keep, say, a walleye and, and eat a walleye. Um, but there's a difference between catching and, and, and catching to eat. And I think it's managed very well, in my opinion, with the few amount of lakes. So 800 lakes, and I think there's only 100 and 72 or 74 of them that support walleye so one compliments to the anglers for asking the questions and practicing catch and release but in my personal opinion hats off to alberta conservation association the alberta fishing game and all the clubs involved to allow us just you know with so much pressure on each lake the opportunity just to go fishing and in my personal opinion last 20 years the fishing is still incredible. Yeah, I guess it's it's a shift of it's a it's a mind shift, you know, going from, you know, the, the maybe days where a, an older angler had remembers catching a, a handful of of walleye and bringing them home and put them on the barbecue or having shore lunches and that type of thing. So it's it's kind of a shift like you said, 800 fishable lakes and well over 200,000 angling licenses um sold yeah. pretty well on a on an annual basis. Uh, do the math and and it I mean if we were to open up a lake or lakes to catch and release we would probably get through half a season and we'd be done to catch and keep yeah i mean yeah for sure and and add on top of that that walleye don't spawn until they're four or five years old and uh, i think it's roughly two percent of those eggs that that spawn they make it to adulthood so it's only two percent like you stock five hundred thousand walleye into a lake finger you know fingerlings it sounds like a lot but if only 2% of those make it to survive to adulthood, it's not that much. Now, speaking of, <clears throat> of, of, of walleye and, and, um... In creating more opportunity that's one thing that as you've mentioned uh 
uh, conservation groups and, and especially the provinces embarked on. Uh, you're looking at um, programs like the A Collection one. I know that you were out uh, with me this past spring um, watching um, Alberta environment biologists go out and, and net walleye to bring them in, milk them and, and uh, move their eggs up to Cold Lake where they'll be um, um, put into hatcheries and, and then released later. I mean, that's kind of a it, it, it seems that we, we need to have those kinds of programs if we're going to ensure um, fishing opportunities into the future, Wes. I, uh, I couldn't agree with you more. And I truly wish everybody could see the, the hard work and dedication that went into that. Even for me, I, I'm on the water all the time and, and I love walleye is my bread and butter. I love walleye fishing. It got me to this point. But to see the work that went on well, we're all at home with the seasons closed. And I mean, it was cold, there's hard work there. It was a, an incredible team effort. And, you know, the Wally, when they, when they brought them out, milked them, they were out of the water less time than uh, when an angler catches and releases a fish. So just the, the, the dedication that goes on behind the scenes that we don't realize that goes into to our walleye lakes. It was an, a real eye opener and incredible to be a part of. When you look at, at, at not just walleye, but other species of fish, and I've said it for a number of years now that uh, perhaps the undiscovered country are Alberta's river systems. Um, I know that that can pose an, an additional challenge to many anglers because you either need a, 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 a speedboat or you need access to someone that has a, 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 dr a boat, a drift boat or a jet boat, whatever. Um, but really, the the river systems are a untapped gem in Alberta. Is that something that you would you would agree with? Hundred percent, and you, and you're right. You're you're a little bit more limited. Like you need the jet boat, or um, but but they also offer our river systems also offer a great deal of incredible shoreline angling. Um, and when you mention Alberta's world known for its its river systems and its trout species. But there is some, some of my biggest walleye have come from the North Saskatchewan. Um, I love fishing the North Saskatchewan for the, the lake sturgeon. I fish the South Saskatchewan for the lake sturgeon. Um, and, and even, you know, it's just an incredible fishery for a variety of species, even the gold eye. A lot of fun. Absolutely. And, and Sturgeon, it's, it is interesting, you know, the province has been doing a, um, a, a survey, I guess, a population estimate of, of um, Sturgeon in the North Saskatchewan. I think they're going to be moving to the South Saskatchewan in 23. Um, sort of give a, give your top of mind uh, um, experience with Sturgeon, especially here on, on the North Saskatchewan, Wes. Um, I found it incredible fishery uh of a, a, a you know a, a prehistoric species that doesn't get as much attention as the white sturgeon on the fraser river um but just a, and an incredible species a lot of fun to catch and and i'm glad to say every time i've been out we've we've caught several of them so i'm really excited that the tagging program's coming back uh, I've been involved with the Fraser River Sturgeon Conservation Society and Rick Hansen for the last 10 or 12 years on the Fraser River and the Harrison River. And I see the passion that goes into that tagging program and and supporting and helping the species, making sure they, you know, live on. Um, and especially the guides, the guides on the river, you know, everyday anglers, they're all a part of it and they want to be a part of it. And that's, I was encouraged to see that it started here again. Um, and I'm excited for it, you know, once they start getting their data and, and seeing the results. I, I'm really excited for it. It's kind of become a little bit near and dear to me. <laughs> well, they're a kid like dinosaurs when they were kids. Now you can go out and catch one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they are an amazing species. That is for sure. Um, hey, here we are in. Uh, you know, we're, we're we're closing in on Christmas and uh, and the holiday uh, coming right around the corner. And of course, well, there's a lot of folks that that do like the hard water and get out there and and, and you know it. it 
it's mobile. You can go anywhere on a lake and and you know drill a hole, and pretty pretty straightforward. Um, top mind, uh, Wes. What are what are some key things that that you would offer in terms of advice to those that that enjoy or want to get into ice fishing? I uh, like you said, uh, ice fishing puts everybody on a level playing field. You don't have to have the big fancy tracker boat or, or, you know, and and it's inexpensive. So you can get out and go fishing for a variety of species. Um, What I recommend is if you're new to it, and I've done this myself on a lake I've never fished before, I'll often go where the cabins are or where the the shacks are because they know they're, they're locals, they're in the know, but do maintain you know, the courtesy and the respect stay. I still like to stay a casting distance away. Just, just like if you were fishing on the open water. Um, But anglers are incredible. They'll help you out. They'll point you in the right direction. Um, Take your kids out because it's a lot of fun for kids. Keep them warm, keep your cooler full of food and snacks. And you know what? Ice fishing, fishing is fishing. So when my little guy was young, we'd always take his skates you know, or, or do something on the ice just to pass the time. So it was a positive experience for them. Um, but the best thing I can do is is just go fishing and, and enjoy. That 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 is, you know, at the end of the day, I think this is really one of the fun family activities that you can do in the middle of winter that uh, everyone can, you know, it can be top out there. You're sitting there watching uh, the ice freeze over a hole. But uh, uh, like you said, if you can incorporate other activities into the, into the day. And so when the fish start biting, you're, you know, the kids get engaged. hundred percent. And I mean, if it is that cold, maybe wait till the next day or till it warms up. We are in Alberta, wait 20 minutes, it'll get warmer. <laughs> um a hundred percent it's it's just it's just the fact get out and go and and keep it fun we wish you nothing but continued success one of the true ambassadors of uh angling in in canada not just western canada in my opinion wes uh all the best and uh wishing you and your family a, a very merry christmas thank you very much and thank you for having me and merry christmas to everybody